unit 5. This unit helps you to understand the pattern making techniques for salwar and churidar through your combination of video demonstration and textual content. By the end of this unit, students will be able to develop a salwar pattern by following the instruction and the measurements. Create a churidar pattern by following the measurements. Discuss the problem regarding the fit and the style line of the salwar and churidar. This lesson we are going to make the draft of salwar. We need two measurements for that. One is the total length from waistline to bottom and the hip round. This has three components. One is waistband, other one is a side panel and the front panel. Now start drawing the waistband. First draw a perpendicular line and mark 0. Zero to one is hip round by six, one sixth of hip. So mark the hip round is thirty six by six is six inches, and zero to two is equal to one fourth of hip plus one and a quarter inch. One fourth of hip is nine plus one and a quarter is ten and a quarter and draw a perpendicular line zero one is hip round by six that is one sixth of hip thirty six by six is equal to six inches and zero two is one fourth of hip plus quarter inch, ten and a quarter inch, and mark the same and draw the perpendicular line. This is for waist band or waist belt. Going to come on the waistline. And the center front, this is the center front and this is the side seam. The side seam has the fold. And center front need a open so it should be cut on with the seam allowance. And the grain line of this should be a horizontal grain line to get enough strength to the waistband. Now we are going to allow the seam allowance and the hem allowance. The seam allowance at bottom is half an inch and the waistline is hem allowance, allow one and a half an inch for the hem allowance and at the front half an inch. And draw the lines The first fold is quarter inch 
or 3 eighth of an inch and the second fold is the hem width. So, this is the hem width and these are the seam allowance. So, we need to cut the piece, cut two pieces, one is for the front, other one is for the back. So, front and back both the piece is there. So, we need to cut two pieces. The center front may have open, we should cut with the seam allowance. The side seam can be on fold and the allowance of the hem and the seam allowance at the bottom and seam allowance at the center front should be allowed. The waistband is done. Now we are drawing the side panel for the leg. Leg has the side panel and the center panel. Side panel is a rectangular piece which has the length as total length minus hip belt or a waist belt width that is 6 inch. So, total length 41 inch minus 6 inch plus 1 inch is the length. The width should be half hem round, hem round is 11 inch, half hem round is 5 and a half an inch minus 1, we should mark 4 and a half an inch as the width at the top and the bottom and the length should be 37 inch and mark a rectangular form from 4, 5, 6, 7. This is side panel, we already done the rectangle and now we are going to draw the seam allowance, seam allowance at the top and the side should be half an inch and we should provide the hem allowance at the bottom as one and a half an inch to two inch as per the hem width. And this side panel has a fold at the side and the grain line should be parallel to the fold line. We need to cut two pieces for right side one and left side one. This is the side panel for the salwar, the length as the same as side panel. Draw a perpendicular line, the length has to be total length of salwar minus the waist belt width plus 1 inch. So, totally we should mark 37 inches as the side panel. And the width of the panel is 8 to 11 as hip by 2, half of hip. Hip measurement is 36 by 2 is 18 inches. From 8 we should mark 10 and 9, 0 10 is hip by 6 plus 1 that is 1 sixth of hip plus 1 inch. So, 6 plus 1, 7 inch has to be marked for 10 and draw the horizontal lines from 8, 10 and 9. Square down 11 to 12. Then 9 to 13 is 1 inch and join 12 and 13. The draft is done. Now we are going to allow the seam allowance. This panel is going to attach along with the side panel. So we should allow seam allowance at the at this line and in leg line and the crotch line and the top and at the bottom as the hem line. Now we are going to allow the seam allowance. We finished drawing the seam allowance on three side and one side with the hem allowance. 
and this piece we need to cut two pieces for one leg. So, for the both the legs we need to cut four pieces and the grain line of this should be parallel to the side line. And we can cut a 4 by 4 inches piece to give a gusset at the crotch to get more comfort. This is salwar test fit. The salwar has a belt piece and the leg piece and it has two piece that is the side panel and the center panel. It provides pleats both at the front as well as at the back. Back gives the excess for the bum raise and the crotch is little lower than the actual crotch. So, two in, one and a half inches lower than that. Then the pleats are forming like this when the pleat is being arranged towards the center front. When the pleat is being arranged towards the center back, the pleat will go towards the back. And the length should be 1 inches extra than the ankle level and this level should be the foot length. So, this give a, a, a very loose fit for the body. Today we are going to learn how to make a straight patiala pattern. For a straight patiala pattern you need to make sure your selvage lies on this side. All the selvage should be aligned to the lines drawn here and there will be total, num the total number of pieces will be two of these patterns, two of this section, two of this and four of a yoke and if you wish to make a separate placket for the hem and the three main measurements which you require is the total length of the uh, of your leg, then the hem of your leg and the hip, total hip measurement for your body. And you can always divide the hip measurement by 6 for this is being used commonly. So we will start by making this. Is, this is how your pattern will look on the paper. First you take your fabric total length and fold it into two halves. For example, if this is my total fabric width, uh, if this is my total fabric width, I'll divide, I'll fold it into half. Half of my this fabric is 17.5. So you measure whatever is your half of the fabric. For me, it's 17.5. So I took a 17.5 measurement here. And then similarly, keep on making folds. So I'll show you how to make the folds. You take your total length measurement. For your total length measurement, you take the total leg of your size. For example, here I have taken as 41 and minus 6 inches. That is your hip yoke measurements generally. And then whatever will be the total size for here will be 36. And you add 1 inch for the allowance. So, you have a total 37 inch measurement. So, what you do is take your selvage, which will be your length, and take 37 measurement. Then you're gonna fold it into a half and then keep on folding on the vertical direction. You have to make such three you have to make three such folds in order to make sure you get sorry, I mean you need to make four patterns in order to make sure you get two of these two of these and two of these. So for this you need to make sure you have a fold on this side and it is called on fold. On fold means you need to make sure this crease lies on this line and for these it will be cut too so they have no on fold so it's gonna be separate pieces. It's going to be two all separate pieces like these. So these, you, for such, these two patterns you need it. So we'll start by making the pattern. Okay, well now we'll start by making the pattern for this. This is the side seam, this is the inseam or the leg seam and this is the crotch area. So we'll start with the first one. Well, for the first, like I told you, you need the total length of the garment. 
for that it for us for example now i took 41 as the measurement then i'll minus it with the hip by 6 whatever is your hip measurement for now i have taken 36 so it's going to be 6 inch and then add 1 inch for seam allowance so i need a total of 37 so make sure you draw a line that is of length 37 So my total paper measurement itself is 37. So I leave it till there and I draw a straight line. Here you need to make sure you get your hem. For this your hem length that is your leg length can may differ from people to people. For me it's 10. So for 10 I'll take half of it and half of 10 is 5. So we'll take 5 as the measurement and add 2 inch for an allowance so that your leg can go in. So now we'll take 2 inch. So our total length becomes 5 plus 2 that is 7. Mark a notch in the point where you find. Next, we have to take a measurement on the top that is 17.5 which you took the on full measurement or the half of the fabric. From there, draw a perpendicular line downwards. You also need to have another piece of the same length that is 17.5. So I take a measurement again for 17.5. And draw another perpendicular line. Like you can see in the paper, the whole pattern is divided into three parts. The similar thing I have done with my pattern. So these are the two equal parts, that is the 17.5 and this will be a 10 inch extension in the width. For now we will make this pattern. This is the crotch area. For this, all you need to do is take the crotch depth which is so, uh, 1 by 6 of your hip plus half inch plus 1 inch. 1 inch is the seam allowance and half inch is the ease which we give. So now for me since the hip was 36 my total came into 7 and a half. Now take a perpendicular scale that is the set square and measure 7 and a I'm going on focus. So now we'll start measuring seven and a half crotch depth from the tip. You need to make sure while making the pattern it's on the other side of the paper from where you made the hem. Use a set square to make a straight line for guideline. Okay, now you need to make sure you join the two points that is the crotch depth and the hem using your hip curve. Yeah. 
you can use your French curve on the smaller edges. Now we will make the yoke pattern. For the yoke pattern, you have to make a rectangular piece where the length will be hip by 4 plus 2. Hip by 4 is the total hip plus 2 will be added for the ease. That makes a total of 4 inch ease in the total yoke. And then the length which is hip by 6 plus 1 plus half inch. So now we'll start by making the yoke. For that, first you need to do is make a line. Make a straight line and draw perpendicular. Now, as we saw, the length of the rectangular should be hip by 4 plus 2 inch. So, your hip by 4 for 36 is 6. So now, for the length of the rectangular, you need to take the measurement, that is your hip measurement by 4, which will be for me 36 divided by 4, that is 9. So 9. And then, you need to take 2 inch ease. This ease can differ depending upon your choice. Make sure it is from 1 inch to 2 inch to 3 max. Then we will make, take the breadth of the rectangle. Which needs to be hip by 6 plus 1 inch plus half. So, my hip by 6 is... 36 by 6 which is 6 plus 1 inch plus half so it's 7 and a half so we are going to take a measurement of 7 and a half and draw a perpendicular line So this is your yoke piece which you need to cut four times. Now we are going to create the bottom cuff that is to get give a sturdiness to the bottom of the salwar. So we are going to start making it. Now we'll take the length of the total hem which we took for the earlier pattern. for which it was 7. Mark 7 inches and draw a perpendicular line. This will be 2 inch in max or two and a half if you want one. Uh, this is going to be the measurement of your cuff length plus one inch, that is half inch and half inch seam allowance. So I'm taking my cuff length as one and a half. So my total length will be two and a half. Now draw another perpendicular line.
and you get your rectangular piece for the cuff. For the yoke, you need to cut two pieces, that is, the side seam will be on fold and the center front or in the center back will be the open end. Now I am going to show you how to cut the yoke piece. So for cutting the yoke piece, you have to put the fabric which is on the folded side on the on fold side. Now, what you are going to do is measure the top. The top of your yoke in the pattern was 11 inch. So I shall mark exact 11 inch on the fabric. And my length in the pattern was 7 and a half. So you do the same here. Mark 7 and a half. Now square down, the two points, and cut the panel. So now we have got a yoke panel. You have to make sure you make two yoke panels. I have already cut my other one and all the on folds will be on the side and on the center and the back you will be joining your yoke. So we need to cut our cuff. For the cuff you need to make sure your cuff is on the cross crane. That is the selvage will lie parallel to the top. It is similar to that of a yoke. Now you are going to place the unfold on one side. And you are going to measure the top of the cuff. For me it's 7, so I'm going to measure 7 inches. And I took a width of 2 and a half. Similar to yoke, just draw a perpendicular line. Make sure you remove your selvage while tracing the pattern. Since half inch is the selvage, so I remove the half inch on the top. Cut the fabric. This is your cuff piece, cut piece. You going to need two pieces of such two such pieces so we mention it as cut two you are going to make sure your on fold lies on the side and this is going to be in the inseam that is the inside 
Now I'll show you how, how to cut these two panels. So in a fabric, you take the on-fold. So we took the 17 and a half inch width and this is the on-fold. So for an on-fold, you keep it here and cut the fabric in 17 and a half. Make sure while stitching that all your seam allowance are only half inch and all the seam allowance have been included in the pattern. So your side panel will look like this. So you're gonna have to have two such panels. For this pattern, you'll take another 17 and a half here and then cut the fabric. So you take a width of 17 and a half and the length as required. So now you're going to join these two fabrics together. I'll show you how. Okay, now we are going to do is join these two, these two panels together with a half inch seam allowance, which I've already done. Now you have, like I said, you're going to have four panels of this. So. What you're going to do is take two panels and attach on each side of the fabric. So this is the on-fold fabric where you have the fold and then this is where you're going to stitch the two fabric. So it's going to produce this big fabric and this is for one leg. Now after attaching the three panels of one leg together, what we're going to do is trace the inseam on the fabric. For which you need to make sure you lay your fabric under the pattern. So now we are going to trace the pattern for which you keep the fabric at the bottom. Put your carbon upside down that is it should face towards the fabric and then place it and start tracing the curve. Now after tracing you will get your inseam line here. So now start cutting the inseam line. While cutting make sure you do not give any extra allowance as all the allowance is included in the pattern. Now for the crotch side, the pattern which you just cut, you are going to place it here and trace the other pattern for the crotch. So we are going to use the fabric which we cut right now, place it perpendicular here and then cut, trace the other pattern. Now the fabric which you just cut, place it on the final pattern that is the crotch side of both legs. Now use your tracing sheets. So now we are going to trace the final crotch inseam. So I place the fabric, then I place my tracing sheet and then you do the tracing.
now as you can see we have the tracing lines now cut the fabric both the fabrics together You need to make sure you have a total of four such you need to make sure you have a total of four such panels for both the legs and two for one leg. Now the crotch panels which you cut needs to be attached to this panel on the sides. Make sure you do not make a mistake. This is your bottom hem and this is the longer one with the longer depth is your crotch. So now we'll attach the crotch fabric portion to the other whole fabric. I'm going to show you how to attach it. So here you're going to hold these two points together and make a stitch at half an inch. I'm going to make do a pin for you. Now we have gonna now like you can see I have done the pinning there instead of pins you are supposed to stitch on the both sides make sure your right is facing right and the wrongs are wrong so this is how your total three piece fabric will look like these are the three panels so on one leg there will be a total of five panels one two one on fold fabric four five For the yolks, what we are going to do is take the ends together and make a stitch at half an inch. So I'm going to pin for you. Do the same for the front. Now this will give you a tubular fabric. Now we are going to make the block for churidar and churidar has uh, 
two component one is the waistband another one is the leg piece and churidar has a crush at the bottom having the exact measurement of the ankle with the churi effect and it has the continuous panel from in leg to in leg and the hip piece has been around with the drawstring. Now we are going to draw the waist belt or band and draw a perpendicular line. Mark 0. 0 1 is equal to waistband width. It is hip by 5 plus half an inch. Hip is 36, it will come around 7 1 by 8. And the width is hip by 4 plus 1 and a quarter inch. So, 9 plus 1 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter, mark 2 and draw a rectangle mark 3 and we should allow the seam elements for the belt belt piece top side has hem and at the side on fold and at the center with the seam allowance. The bottom seam allowance half an inch and center seam allowance half an inch. And the hem allowance is one and a quarter inch. And the grain line This is CF and this is side seam and the grain line should be horizontal. And the side seam can be on fold. When this side panel is on fold, from center front to center back can be a single piece, one for the left and other for the right. So we should cut two pieces. This is the leg part for the churidar. Again we have to draw a perpendicular line and this is the side seam line and draw perpendicular line and 0 1 is the total length minus waist belt width plus half an inch. So we marked around 34 inches at here then 1 to 2 is equal to 8 inches for the churi effect already told that it is a churidar pant, then it has the crush effect or the churi effect at the ankle. This is the ankle line and from there we are extending around 8 inches. This may reduce or extended according to the requirement of the churi or, or according to the fabric. And this line is the crotch line and 0 3 is hip by 3 minus waistband width. 
So 12 minus 7 can be 5 plus half an inch, 5 and a half an inch. And 4 is mid of 3 to 1. The knee line, this line is called as knee line. And this ankle line knee line is mid of crotch to ankle and draw all the basic lines. Now 0 to 5 is hip by 3 plus 4 inches and square down 5 to 6 and 4 7 is equal to knee round by 2 plus quarter inch. And 1 8 is equal to ankle round by 2 plus quarter inch. Now we should draw the in leg line and shape. See from 9 to 8 to 9 is the same measurement. So it, it is a straight line because for the churi we are taking a straight piece. And from there from 8 to 7 is a curve from ankle to knee. Net, next external line mark 2 inch inside as 10. An external line from here and draw a curve from here to there and use French curve to draw this curve line. This will give the fit at the thigh with the excess of ease and knee measurement with quarter inch ease ankle measurement with quarter inches is being there. Now we need to allow the seam allowance, waist at top half an inch, at the side half an inch, at the inlet seam half an inch and bottom one inch but the side should be on fold and the grain line is a bias grain line. This churidar will be always cut in bias and uh, this is on fold. So one piece for the left leg, the other piece for the right leg. So cut number is two piece. Churidar is a leg garment which will hug the leg at the cuff and the thighs and knees. So we need to cut the churidar on the bias grain. Bias grain will stretch along with the body shape and it will give a perfect fit. Being churidar is a long garment, we can't cut the churidar leg piece on a single layer. So we need to make a box kind of a fabric. then fit the churidar on the bias grain and cutting will be possible to get such long thing. So first you must take your fabric and match the selvage and, and the cross grain. Take the two pieces together, two selvage together and do a stitch and do a stitch on this line. Then this has to be center fold. This has to be placed at the center. The stitching line has to be placed at the center of the fabric. Then we should match all the selvage. Start the stitch from selvage along with the selvage to the entire length, along with the selvage to the entire length. So 
we got we stitch the piece we stitch the piece first at the cross grain by matching the selvage cross grain by matching the selvage and then we place at the middle of the fabric middle of the fold then we stitch the selvage along with the selvage to the to the entire length of the fabric which is required to the length of it so we may get now your square kind of a the crotch and hip line so one piece can be fit on this way other piece can taken on the other grain other opposite side and place the pattern so there also you should be sure about the seam should not come at the calf level so you can you can bring the pattern down to have the seam above the thigh not on the leg so you should place like this then only the grain line will go on a bias direction the garment will have very fitted effect and it will hug along with the leg the waistband should be taken on the warp grain so it should be placed parallel to the selvage and it should be on fold so you must take an another fold at here one for the front and one for the back so the area at here should be the waistband piece this is the churidar test fit which has been cut on the bias and churi effect has been kept in the ankle level for 2 3 inches and it gets your close fit and uh, the gathering is been arranged at the front we can arrange both at the front and back also and it has a drawstring at the waistline waist has been wide and it has been tightened by doing wearing with the drawstring and it has a crotch seam to a front to back and the crotch is also 1 inch down from the actual crotch so it it provides a very very close fit and and the bias grain will help us to move the body and move the leg in all directions